Welcome to Community Church Online. If this is your first time joining us, welcome. We are so glad that you're here. You don't want to miss out. We want to connect with you. Text CONNECT to our church phone number, 571-209-5000, and a member of our team will be in touch with you. Look, we're a note-taking church. To follow along, download our app. Simply text the word APP to 571-209-5000 and follow along with us. At any moment during this message, if you need prayer or have a question, text the word CONNECT to 571-209-5000 and someone from our HOPE team will be in touch with you. Did any of you memorize the passage this week from Matthew 11, 28 through 30? Come on, if you didn't memorize it, it's okay. We're le- we'll, I'll let you off the hook right now. You can read with me on the screen. You guys ready? By the way, when we read scriptures on the screen, we want everyone to participate. Ready? And this is what it says. Come to me, all you who are tired and what? And I will give you, isn't that good? Accept my teachings and learn from me. This is Jesus speaking because I am gentle and humble. Come on. In spirit. This is actually one of the very few times that the Bible tells us what God is like. He's gentle and humble in spirit. And he says, and you will find rest for your souls. And the burden that I ask you to accept is easy. And the load I give you to carry is what? Is, is a light. And so this week we're, we're going to be uh, moving into this conversation about our thinking. Say thinking. Come on, if you're taking notes, I've got a sermon title. You ready? Here it is. Remove the thinking cap. Remove your thinking cap. And here's the big idea. I believe that our lives will most often move in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Your life will move in the direction of your strongest thoughts. Say, remove the thinking cap. In other words, what we think It it matters, and uh, wrong thinking can hinder us from experiencing all that God has uh, for our lives. If we're going to live fully and freely and experience the abundant life that God has for us, we've got to be willing to work on our thinking, our, our thoughts, when they're unchecked, unfiltered, uncontrolled can cap our capacity, come on, to experience all that God has to offer. You guys awake with me this morning? Come on, right where you are, say remove the thinking cap. Come on. God has better things for us. And and by the way, this isn't a new idea. This is something Paul has been talking about or or talked about all throughout the New Testament. And we're going to look at a passage here in Romans chapter 12 this morning, beginning in verse 1 through 2. This is Paul speaking. If you don't have a Bible with you, you can read it up on the screen. And Paul picks up here in verse 1, and he says this. He says, I urge you, brothers, in view, say in view, of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world. Here's the key. But be transformed by the what? The renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test or see and approve what God's will is. Here it is. His good, say good. His pleasing and perfect will. And Paul seems to be persuaded here that the key to living a transformed life is to have a transformed mind. To, to, to allow God to transform our are thinking, and, and it wasn't just Paul, but it was also Jesus. We can see plainly through the Gospels that Jesus was concerned with our thought life and what we think about. We can see it right here in, in Matthew chapter 12. You can read on the screen. It says, and Jesus knew their thoughts, and he replied. We can see another passage. He's talking to the Pharisees here, those who were trying to accuse him 
We pick up in Luke chapter 6. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees were watching closely to see if Jesus would heal. Is anybody happy this morning that our God heals? Come on, someone needs to hear uh, right where you are that we do, in fact, have a God that heals. He's available. He's, he's for you. He's with you. They were looking to see, is he going to heal on the Sabbath day so they could accuse him? And here's the key. But he knew what? What they were thinking, and he replied. So here's the note for you as you're taking notes. What you think about, what we think about, matters. What we think about matters. Uh, this ancient wisdom saying found in Proverbs, written, written thousands of years ago, Solomon uh, put it this way. He said, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. Uh, in other words, our lives will most often, come on, what? Move in the direction of our what? Strongest thoughts. I was uh, on the phone a few months ago with one of my good friends, Justin Holmberg, and, and uh, so you, you all have somebody that you like to just dump stuff on? You got those people, like, I know when he sees my, my, my name on his phone, he doesn't want to pick it up. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dump something on him. And, um, and, and so he picked it up. And I'm telling him about this and that. And I heard this podcast and I read this book. And this is what I think about current events. And this is what I think the Bible means about that. And after a few moments, uh, Justin graciously, if you know Justin, uh, he <laughs> said, Micah, it sounds like you're, you're reading too many books. You're listening to too many podcasts. Uh, m many people in, the, in, in their New Year's resolution say they want to learn more. Justin was encouraging me to do the opposite. Because why? What you think about matters. What you put into your mind matters. I was talking to a neighbor a friend of mine uh, just over the holiday season. We were outside. Don't judge me. We were social distanced. We had our mask on, and, and he is a part of a tech uh, startup, and he and his family just moved here from California, and uh, man, I love talking to people like that. I, I just kind of nod and smile. I don't know what you're saying, but it sounds good, and so we were just asking and, and talking about things, and, and he told me about this thing called mastermind conferences. I'm, I'm probably late to the game. You guys are like, yeah. what is a mastermind? A mastermind conference is an event. It can happen for a day or a few days, but people will pay up to tens of thousands of dollars, travel to a city they don't live in, just to spend a few days or even a day in front of an expert in their field or a guru who can help them with their thinking. Who can help them move forward when it comes to sales or developing people or expanding their company, whatever it might be. But the reality is, is that they see the value in right thinking. And they'll pay thousands of dollars to, 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 to get in front of somebody who can help. And I wonder how many of us believe this morning, come on, that our God has a seat at the table for us and he can help. And the invitation is open. He wants to speak to you this morning. Are you willing to listen? Here's the insight here. The, the truth is, is that power is unlocked. When our thoughts come into alignment with God, with what is true. When our mind comes into alignment with the master. There's power that's unlocked there. And so what we think, come on, say it with me, what I think matters. You know God has some thoughts about you. Here, here's the truth here. Someone needs to hear this. God has some thoughts to you, towards you, and his thoughts towards you are wonderful and great. I think if he could have a cup of coffee with you, he would, he would listen more than he would talk. He would, he would smile at you. He would, he would tell you that it's okay, that, that you're not defined by your limitations or by your past, but that he has great things for you. His great thoughts towards you. You, he, he, he's not angry with you. He's not mad at you. 
He's not disappointed. Y'all, some of you, are, you're, I can see in your faces, you're, he's not mad at you. He is the divine. Come on, it, right where you're watching. I don't know where you're at. We got some people watching online. I want you to know, God is the divine restorer. He is a restorer. What he touches always gets better. What I think about matters. Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, Paul writes this, and it applies to us today. He says, let this mind, come on, be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. Well, what's the mind of Christ? Well, we know that our God, we just read it, it was our memory verse this past week. He is gentle and humble <laughs> at heart. Let this mind be in you. And by the way, it is a let. We got to let. Come on, Pastor Fred, it's a let. I got to let it happen because God doesn't force our cooperation, but he does invite it. He's always got a seat at the table for you. This made me think about a passage, one of my favorite passages. It's, it's found in Matthew, beginning in verse 9, chapter 20. You can read it with me on the screen. This is an incredible passage. Read it with me. It says, there was a woman who had been suffering from a hemorrhage for 12 years. She came up behind him, talking about Jesus, and touched the fringe of his cloak. Here's the key. For she was saying to herself, if I only touch his garment, I will get well. The get well there in the Greek is sozo. It means I will be saved or I will be rescued. But Jesus turning and seeing her, aren't you glad God sees us? said, daughter, take courage. Your faith has made you well. It has rescued you. It has saved you. And at once, the woman was made well. I want you to notice it starts with what the woman told herself. If I can get, just get close enough to Jesus, if I, if, I, if I can just get around the Savior, my circumstances can change. I can move from being stuck to being freed and filled with hope and redemption. Come on, say what I think matters. So here's a question. What have you been thinking about lately? What is occupying your mind? Here's a question. If your inner thoughts could be played out loud for the world to hear, what would we hear? I just want to suggest something. No one has more influence in your life than you do because nobody speaks to you more than you do. Here's another question. I was so challenged by this as I was writing this. Come on. Would you allow somebody to speak to you the way that you speak to you? Some of us wake up and it's so easy to say, I'm, I'm fat, I'm, I'm getting wrinkles, I'm, I'm not a good parent, I'm not the parent I should be, I, I wish I was a better business leader, I wish I was a better coach. I, I'm just, would you allow someone to speak those thoughts into your life? Come on, what we think, what is it? matters. Come on. And, and, uh, and so here's the truth. What's on the outside matters, but what's on the inside matters most. Uh, when I met my wife, Kelly, over, gosh, 12 years ago, that's crazy. I was 11. Uh, I'm just kidding. Um, I'm just joking. Some of you are like, who is this young guy? Um, when I met my wife, I, the first thing I saw was the outside. Man, I was like, dang, she's good looking. She, I didn't know anything about her. I just knew, wow, she's beautiful. I don't, she definitely won't talk to me. Uh, it, but we had a conversation, and, and I'll tell you, after eight years of marriage, it has been more than what's on the outside that has helped us get through. We have discovered in eight years of marriage that what's on the inside matters. What am I thinking about? Who am I 
becoming. And uh, I was thinking about this a little bit. And I've got two, we've got two boys. Judah is four years old. Any any parents with young kids in the room? We got a four year old and a six year old, and um, and they never fight. It's amazing. It's just I can't relate to people when they talk about how bad their kids are. I just. And we, uh, I'm just kidding, of course, but but our neighbor bought a basketball hoop. Aren't you thankful when other people buy stuff so you don't have to? <laughs> I'm like, I need some more neighbors like this. So I just had to buy the $4 basketballs. Come on, somebody. So we got, I got some basketballs, and Judah, my four-year-old, was losing his mind because his ball was flat. And Eli's ball bounced. And he was right, though, because when you have a ball that's properly inflated, it does what it's supposed to do. It was created to move from your hand to the ground and back up again. And, and, and so it, it works better when it's filled with the right thing. And Judah was also right. My four-year-old taught me that even if the ball has the same composition, in the same girth, in the same weight, and it's made up of the same things. The outside is the same. If it's not filled with the right things, it doesn't work. Come on, some of us believe so much. We've convinced ourselves so much. Come on, I, I've been here, guys. If I would just change locations, if I would just change my vocation, if I would just change my marriage, and by the way, sometimes those things need to change, but most of the time, you need to change. See, because, and someone just shared this with me after first service. I don't know who wrote this, but I loved it, so I'm going to steal it. She said, Micah, it was so good, and my, she said, my therapist a couple of years ago told me that wherever I go, I'm going to be there. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, what we think about matters. And here's the truth. God doesn't just see what's on the outside. He doesn't just look on the outside circumstances. He sees the inner thoughts of mankind. He sees the intention and the motive. And so here's a secret. If you're taking notes, come on. Here's the secret. You ready? Often, God listens to and responds to what we are thinking not the actual words that we say, to the inner conversation that we are having with ourselves because what's on the inside matters. Micah, I, don't, I, I hear what you're saying, but I've got thoughts that come sometimes, and I don't know where they come from, and I, I don't know what to do with them, and, and, and they're not positive thoughts. They're negative thoughts, and some of you, if we could sit down and have a cup of coffee, you would, you would tell me. I've had people tell me this. I've had these thoughts since I was a little girl, since I was a little boy, and I just want to let you know right now it's okay because sometimes we might not know where a thought is coming from. And we may not have control over where a thought is coming from. But we can always choose where we're going to place that thought. Am I going to give it, come on, am I going to give it a seat at my table? Don't get down on yourself for having that thought. Choose, as scriptures say, to take it captive. Put it in its proper place. So that's the truth there. We may not be able to control where thought comes from. And, and, and Paul encourages us here in 2 Corinthians 10.5 to take every thought captive. Make it, make it, make it, make it obey Christ. I love this quote from uh, New York Times bestselling book, Thinking Fast and Slow, by, by Dr. Kahneman. It's a little bit long of a quote, but I want you to read it with me. It's so good right where you are. If you're sitting at home, if you're driving, maybe don't try to read it with me. You can listen. You guys ready? He says, when you are asked what you are thinking about, you can normally answer. You believe that you know what's going on in your mind, which often consists of one conscious thought leading in an orderly way to another. Here, read it with me. Come on, if it's on the screen. But that is not the only way the mind works, nor indeed is it the typical way. 
Here it is. Most impressions and thoughts arise in your conscious experience. Say this with me. Without your knowing exactly how they got there. And here's the key. With this in mind, we are often confident even when we are wrong. He says, here, here it is, I love this. He says, in an, object, an objective observer, we're more likely to detect, uh, will more likely detect our errors than we are. I think what he's speaking into there is what the Bible has known for a long time, that our thoughts matter and getting help, getting accountability, having good people around us to help us check our thoughts matter. So here's a question for you. Who have you invited or given permission to to help you check your thoughts? Who have you invited? Uh, Here's a challenge. If everyone in your inner circle thinks exactly like you do, it's possible that you might miss the transformation that God has for you and you will accept or fall for something less. Come on, this this idea really comes from Scripture, Mark chapter 1, verse 14 through 15. Let's read it together. It says, Jesus went into Galilee proclaiming the bad news. Is that what it says? Proclaiming the, the good news of God. The time has come, he said, and the kingdom of God is near. God is available. He's present. He's not just in the future. He's not just for tomorrow. He's not just for when we die. He's right here. He's right now. He's available. And then he follows. He says, this is good news. And then he follows it with this word. You ready? Repent and trust or believe the good news. A lot of us don't associate repent with with anything good. But the word repent there in the Greek is metanoia. It means to change your thinking, to change your direction, to change your mind, to repent. And Jesus seems to be convinced that there can be a blessing and a freedom and some good news that can be experienced when we are willing to change our thinking. Amen? So... What we think matters. We have to be willing to challenge sometimes our thoughts. We have to be willing to work on challenging sometimes our assumptions. And um, if we're unwilling, come on, I just want to suggest something. If we're unwilling to challenge our thoughts, it is likely that we will experience the meaningful transformation that God has for our lives. God wants to bless you. Say, God wants to bless you. Come on, I have a prayer just as we pause. We're not done yet. We got a little bit left. Hang in there with me. Come on, if you're with us online, I got this prayer. I just want to pray over you. I believe this with all of my heart. Come on, it it just goes, Lord, help me to see like you see. Can we just open our hands right now? Lord, help me to love like you love. Lord, let uh, uh, what breaks your heart break mine as well. Lord, transform my mind. Transform my thinking. Transform my life. Help me to see with kingdom perspective. Help me to pledge allegiance to you above anything else. Help me to always leave room. Come on, this is going to challenge some people. Come on, help me to always leave room at the table for people who look and act and feel and think and vote differently than me. Amen. Come on. Spiritual renewal oftentimes happens from the inside out, but it is not just internal. The transformed life that Paul is calling us to will actually begin to overflow into your daily habits and actions. It starts with a thought, but I don't want you to miss it. God wants to be tangibly involved in your life. He doesn't just need to remain in a building on Sunday. He's not just something we think about when it's convenient. He changes. He transforms everything. Everything he touches gets better.
our entire mind, body, and soul, they're not separate things. They're connected. They're interconnected. I believe in this passage, by the way, that's our memory verse this week, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 through 2. I believe Paul is telling us that in view, say in view of God's great mercy, we have to lay down our weapons of defense. We, we have to lay down our need to be right all of the time. We need to be willing to lay down our control. We need to be willing to lay down our differences and hold on to something even better, which is the love of God. It's the great unifier. It's the great restorer. It's the great healer, Holy Spirit. And I love this quote. We're going, we're, this is MLK weekend. We're, we're so thankful, by the way, our church. We're thankful for the transformation that has begun to happen, continue to happen through someone like MLK and Martin Luther. We celebrate that this weekend. Here's a man who is willing to, to challenge the thinking of his day to make more room at the table for humanity and we celebrate those who marched with him in dc and and uh, i was just thinking about this quote and from from martin luther he says by opening our lives to god in christ we become new creatures this experience which jesus spoke of as a new birth is essential say essential if we are going to be transformed think think about what he's saying here only through an inner Say it's an inside job. Only through inner spiritual transformation do we gain the strength to fight vigorously, I love that word, the evils of the world. What about just in our own heart? Come on, and I, the, here's the key, in a humble and loving spirit, not angry, uh, oh, uh, uh, get them, uh, they're wrong. Uh. No, in a humble and loving spirit transformed anytime we I just want to suggest something anytime we are shaped by something other than the love of God we are being shaped into something less than what we were created to be our thoughts matter so Micah okay this is great you're telling me about my thoughts and you, th you gave me some information but how in the world do I change anybody want to know how to Lord I need to know how to change how do I transform I, I was here last night uh, preaching this message and, and honestly just begging God Lord I don't want this to be my thoughts I, I need your Holy Spirit I, you can transform a life you can transform a family I believe someone can come into a room or log in online and their life can be changed and I, I'm preaching this message to an empty room except there is one guy his name is Felix he's a cleaner and he does a lot of stuff in our church he's amazing and I thought he had headphones on and it was awkward but it wasn't as awkward as the moment I realized he was listening. So it's just me speaking to emptiness, and he's walking back and forth, sweeping, mopping, getting it ready for you. And at the end of the message, he just began to share what God had spoken to him. And before, he, before I knew it, he was preaching to me. He was ministering to me. I, I, I was so encouraged. He helped change my perspective on some things. I drove away from here last night at 8 p.m. feeling like, God, I need this message. I needed this more than anybody else. Come on, how many of you know it's good when you get some people around you who can help you see some things you can't see on your own, you can't believe on your own? So how do I change? How do I transform? Thank you for hanging with me, Ellie. <laughs> She's like, well, you just, we're, we're bringing it to an end. You ready? <laughs> Dallas Willard gives us three suggestions biblically for, for, for change. The first thing he says, we need vision. We need to set our eyes on the right things. In other words, like Paul said in Romans, in view of God's great mercy and love. We need to have, here's a good question for you. What are you looking at? 
The second thing he says in your notes is intention. In other words, do you really want to be transformed? How many of us have thought, man, I wish I was wealthier. I, I wish I was skinnier. I, I, I wish I was whatever. You can fill in the blank. I, we think that, right? And, and it's important that we actually have intention of following through. But even with vision and intention, it's not enough. It's not enough to just simply have the thought. If it was, most of us would be billionaires. Amen. It must be followed through with means. The third thing, which is another way of saying accountability. Who are you inviting into your circle? Who, who are you surrounded with? And uh, Are you surrounded with the right people? You will move in the direction of those you hang around the most. So vision, intention, it means. So you might be asking as we, as we close this, Micah, I, I don't know where to start. I don't know what to do. I'm new here. Or, uh, I, I've been kind of on the sidelines for a while. And I just want to tell you, welcome. Thanks for joining us. We've got a couple of things here. We have something called Tuesday morning prayer. From 7 to 8 a.m. every Tuesday, we can social distance, wear a mask, but we're gonna, we pray together. And it's more than that, though. We connect you build relationships. Why? Because who you're around matters. What you think, what you believe matters. And, and there can be some transformation. through. Two, maybe you're not comfortable being in person yet. We have five minutes, come on, say five minutes, of daily hope every day on our Instagram and Facebook. What is that? You can log in and we pray. You'll get to hear a short prayer from someone on our staff, and, and you can get connected and, and allow your mind to be transformed. Uh, you can serve. Say serve. A lot of people think, and I get it, that churches are just out there looking for people to serve, serve their mission, serve their purpose, and, and I think you're missing it if that's what you believe. At least in our church. We want something for you more than we need anything from you. When you serve, you are stepping into relationship with other people who are moving in the same direction, and your life can be transformed. When you serve, you realize that what you're a part of is bigger than the part you play. You can hear stories. I can't tell you how many times I've heard someone while I'm serving share something God's doing in their life. And it strengthens me and encourages me. So you can serve. You can be a part. You can be in a connect group. I don't know if this is true or not, but I'm just going to say it anyway. I think we have around 500 people in virtual groups. Y'all, that's crazy. I said 500 people. Let's take it to 1,000. Will you help us do it? Why? Because who you're around matters. What you're thinking about matters. How you position yourself matters. And it's not just 21 days. I believe in 2021, God's going to transform some things in our lives if we will position ourselves to receive all that he has to offer. He wants to bless you. Right now, you can sign up for Connect Groups. It's not too late. Uh, 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 let's take it further than it's ever been. You can meet right in your uh, living room on Zoom. You can, we have different social gathering groups and, and all that good stuff, but there's plenty of opportunities to serve because, let's just say it one more time, because uh, my, my life will most often move, come on, in the direction, come on, say it, of my strongest thoughts and, and my strongest friendships and, and the patterns and behaviors. My, can we stand up to our feet? I, I, I was talking with a student last week. She's a junior in high school. Her name is Natalie, and she goes to Vir Academy. Where my Vir Virginia Academy family at? Come on. The greatest private school in the world. I'm not going to say Loudoun County. It's not true. It's just in the world. I don't. It's no competition. And Natalie was down here. She's on our worship team on Sundays. And I, I'm not, I'm not going to exaggerate this. After prayer, she comes up to me with tears in her eyes. We're talking, and she goes, Micah. Now, this is a girl that was not coming to church just about a year and a half ago. She, she started coming. She's serving. She's connected. She said, Micah, I just love 
come in the church so much because, listen, this is a junior in high school living in 2021. Some of you guys have, in your mind, you believe that students can't change the world. You need to change your thinking. I'm so thankful for a church that believes in young people. And Natalie, as a junior in high school, she goes, it just feels like one of the only places in the world where people can lay aside their differences and come together. Why? In view of God's great love and mercy, we look to him as the author, the creator, the sustainer of our life. We are not controlled by the earthly circumstances we endure. We have a singular focus on the love of God. He's the great restorer. He's the great healer. He's the great redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Come on. Amen. Amen. We wanted to thank each and every one of you for your generosity throughout this season. It truly does not go unnoticed. To partner with us financially, just simply text the word GIVE to our church phone number, 571-209-5000. As always, help is just a text away. Send the word CONNECT to 571-209-5000 and a member from the team will reach out to you. Love you, Community Church. See you next week.